to covetousness, covetousness, like being in covetousness, there's steps to it. Um, having an evil eye is when you're looking at somebody else's life and you bypass how the Holy Spirit wants you and you indulge yourself in their picture. You indulge yourself in their frame and you want the Spirit of God to make who they are and what they have yours. There's something that happened with Hannah. Hannah only wanted children because of Penina, the other wife of uh, Elkanah. It wasn't the will of God. What came out of Hannah was God opened up her womb, gave her Samuel. And I want you to see this. Look at this. We in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Before I explain this, you know, we're going to be on here for like a little over five minutes, right? It's very important that you don't pattern your life off of people that the Lord didn't design your life to become what their life is becoming. Covetousness is admiration that becomes personal pursuit. Covetousness is admiration that becomes a personal dream. So in covetousness, a person is not just admiring someone else. They're making what happened to them their goal. When the Holy Spirit is guiding your life and you study a sinner, you study somebody that the Holy Spirit is not guiding their life, it is a very dangerous and self-suicidal thing. It's actually the art of a fool. Because while, let me, let me show you something. What is the prophetic observation of a monkey that everybody has in them what they're watching? So whatever you watch constantly, you do automatically. Whatever you watch constantly, you do automatically. So if, if, if you are watching somebody all the time, say, eh -uh, eh -uh, eh -uh, while you're talking, all of a sudden you're going to say, eh -uh, eh -uh, eh -uh, you're going to hear yourself, eh -uh, eh -uh. I never used to say that. But what you keep on watching, you end up automatically doing. So when, when, when the enemy wants to corrupt somebody's life from the specific way that God is forming it, the specific and peculiar way, it's a peculiar you. Remember the Bible says uh, you're a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal generation in the book of Peter, uh, Peter's gospel. So when this peculiar you is coming forth and blossoming, The enemy doesn't want the rose to come out, the lily to come out. So the next stage is, how could I pervert you into another dream by having you study someone that's not in God's dream? Because as long as you're studying them, automatically you're becoming like them mentally. So how they think, you start to think. And it's, it's very scary when you pit yourself in someone else's picture frame. They didn't take a picture with you. You pit yourself inside of that frame and you say, I'm supposed to be like this.
And, and this is where the fighting match happens. God didn't want Hannah to have a child. Hannah wasn't supposed to have any children. That's why her womb was closed. She wasn't. So why are you having a desire for children? Let's watch this here. Have you taken the time to study who is giving me what I desire? Did you know that one wrong conversation with somebody could destroy your potential purity? You're in a place where you're becoming pure and more submissive and more adaptive to God. The spirit of God is able to take over more of your brain, more of your your psyche, your psychological stance is higher in him. You're being glorified in knowledge. You're being glorified in godly qualities, characteristics, traits, reactions, mindsets, meditations, ways, contemplation, plans, pondering. And you have a conversation with one wrong person and they say, you don't have no children. And the question strikes you. Even how they ask you the question make you feel inferior, insecure, inadequate. As if you didn't accomplish anything. And it's so funny that when somebody comes to you with an inappropriate gesture and approach, it exposes to you whether your soul is healed. Oh my goodness. It exposes to you whether you're operating in wholeness. That's why it's good that the father never got rid of Satan. Because Satan's presence exposes to man how much they have become lazy and taken a hold of what God has dispersed to him by his grace and mercy. Without no Satan, you wouldn't have no measurement. You wouldn't know how wayward you are. You wouldn't know how distracted you are. You wouldn't know that you were distracted without Satan. Satan is a magnifier of things that you have dealt with God on incorrectly. Your sight, your ears, your ears, your mouth, your learning. You can learn something from the Bible and grieve God. He not teaching you about the feast. You start learning about the feast. Now you're up there talking about shalom, my brother. Shalom, my sister. Baby, sit yourself down. Come on, baby, you... You up there in the name of Bahamashua, Kamahamashia, Kamamamasea, Mamasamu Makusa. In the name of Mamasande. Mamasande. You done switched over into Muslim. You have Makni. Makdi coming. Makdi coming. Because you went go learn. The Kairos. <laughs> Saints, the hermeneuticals and the philosophicals and the theologicals, when they deal with it, they tell you, oh, uh, um, this is the rhema word, this is the Kairos word, this is the, 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 this is the logos, this is the... Saints, don't, don't worry, I... I know all this stuff, you know. But the persuasive words of man's wisdom does not carry power. That's why Apostle Paul said, I didn't come with the persuasive words of man's wisdom. I came with the demonstration of the spirit and power. Because what Apostle Paul saying, I'm not coming to you like you heard the other people preaching and how they teaching and how they operating and how they doing what they say ministry is and how they're saying they're rulers and teachers and rabbis. I'm coming to you with a display of something fresh 
that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me through conversation and through my adaptation to learn his way. I let go of my life according to what man would say looks godly, seems godly, and feels godly. Do you know what tradition is? Satanic godliness. Don't play with me, boy. I'm in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Let's look at this here. It says in uh, verse uh, 2, it says that and, uh, Elkanah had two wives. And the name of one was Hannah. Montana, no, Hannah, 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 excuse me, excuse me. They tried to get me, they tried to get me. Hannah and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This is major. Oh, this is powerful. Hannah had children. Hannah had no children. Penina had children. This is powerful. I'm going to show you something. This comparison in the text is revealing what one has and what one doesn't have. Now, I want to show you something. Hannah doesn't have children. But Hannah has favor. And Hannah has the will of God the way that it's supposed to be for her. But she's not satisfied. Because she has covetousness. And wherever you find covetousness, there's jealousy. Why not me? Why I don't have that? Why that don't happen to me? Why that didn't happen to me? Why I don't have that? Wherever you find a uh, a covetous person, a person with covetousness in their soul, they also have jealousy because they're cousins. Covetousness and jealousy are cousins. You can't have one without the other. So if you're covetous of somebody, you also are jealous of them. Which means that your brain goes down an evil path attempting to accomplish what they accomplish. My God. What is tradition? Satanic godliness. What is tradition? Satanic godliness. So that's why people that are traditional can't receive the word of the Lord. They can't receive God's word afresh because Satan already told them what God looks like, feels like. And acts like. So when King Jesus came on the scene, they said that he was the devil because King Jesus was not doing what they received in information from Satan of how God acts. So when the Lord goes inside of the synagogue and turns the tables over and releases the marketplace and he's Telling them, no, 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 y'all selling material and merchandise inside of here. They're looking and saying, no, this is not how God would act. This is not how God would deal with this. This is not how God. And so tradition is satanic godliness. Is Satan anointing you to miss God, but telling you it's of God? Oh, oh, Satan telling you to miss God, but Satan also telling you is of God. This is of God while you're missing God. You go and join a church. You're missing God, but Satan is telling you this is a new season. It's of God. You go start a prayer meeting. Satan is telling you this is of God. But you're missing God. He don't want you to start a prayer meeting. You start doing a devotional at a certain time. 
But you don't know it's all in vain because your heart not in it. You don't even understand what you're doing. You're not connecting with the Lord because you're not even finding out what he likes. You're just trying to give him a wrong order. You start your daily devotional. I'm going to pray until this time to this time. You start the devotional, but this is the tradition of Satan because you're missing God with the devotional, but Satan is telling you this is of God. And as long as Satan could get people into tradition, Satan can become your teacher, not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost not telling you how to do this, how to, how to draw nigh to God. Now Satan telling you how to draw nigh to God. And Satan knows that you're not going to get near God because Satan knows it is influenced by Satan. Imagine, do you know what the word enemy means? The word enemy means I've come to trick you. I've come to blind you. I've come to take away your understanding of truth. That's what an enemy is. An enemy is someone that has an ability strong within them to remove the possibility of accuracy with God. An enemy. So I want you to hear this. Hannah doesn't have no children, but she's rich. She's wealthy, she's blessed, and she's taken care of by Elkanah, and she has other things going on in her life that are very prosperous and very lovely. Let me show you something. So let's go down. The Bible says in verse 5, it says the Lord had shut Hannah's womb. It says the Lord had shut her womb. Wait a minute. Let's read this real slow. The Lord had shut her womb. The Lord had shut her womb. So let me ask you a question. What is making Hannah, what is provoking Hannah to want the womb to be opened when the Lord shut it? Would you say that she's in agreement with God's will? No. The, no, it didn't say that Satan was fighting Hannah and she couldn't have children. Satan was fighting Hannah and Satan was hindering her from having children. Satan was fighting Hannah and was blocking Hannah from having children. It says that the Lord had shut her womb, but Hannah is upset. I've never gotten mad with God in my life. But you don't understand getting mad with God. It's not you going to him and saying, Lord, I'm mad at you. You getting mad at God is how the Lord operates. His spirit drops his ways on earth to you throughout the course of your life. So his spirit will deal with you about the way that he wants your life to go. If you get upset by that. That's how you get upset with God. No man can get upset with God unless he has a demon inside of him. Not a demon with him. I said a demon inside of him. No man can get upset with God unless he has a demon inside of him. Let's watch Hannah struggle with her demons. Come on here. Oh my goodness. Let's watch Hannah struggle with her demons. Blessed, favored, and still in the gates of hell. Being terrorized by spirits that other people can't see. It's an internal battle. Oh, yeah, I want the will of God for my life. I just want God to use me. I just want God to have his way. I love the Lord. I just want the Lord to have his way. 
No, no. This is what your mouth is saying. What's going on inside of your mind? What is pulling you constantly for your time and attention? What do you don't have that you're being terrorized? I should have it. I should have it. I should have it. And God's saying you're not supposed to have it. In the garden, all the serpent did was convince the woman that she was being robbed of this tree. Baby, you came into this earth through Adam's rib, and this tree wasn't a part of the bargain. Why are you terrorizing yourself for the tree now? Why are you letting your mind take you a place where you're terrorized about what doesn't even belong to you? And the serpent is conversing with the internal woman. You couldn't see this if you was a lion looking at Eve. She looked normal. She looked like she in dominion. You couldn't tell if you was a fish looking at Eve. She looked like she's still in dominion. Internally, she having a wrestling match with spirits. Now, I, I, I want to take you somewhere you've never gone in the history of the word of God. Hannah's mother had the same problem. So when God calls Hannah to be married to Elkanah, she goes into the marriage with generational yokes and strongholds that her mama never defeated. And she don't know God pit her amongst Blessing, which means empowerment to be successful with God. Empowerment to do things God's way. And so God has a way. He said, I'm going to shut your womb. And you know what she did? Let me pull up all my generational curses and my demons and let me come into alliance with them and let me fight this. Uh-huh. No, no, we don't submit to God. According to this satanic altar, we pit up a fight. According to this satanic altar, if something is God's will, we're going to agree with Satan's will to override it. All right, listen. Look, the Lord had shut her womb. Look at verse 6. No, as a matter of fact, let's go to verse 7. It says that... Um, Elkanah went up year by year to go sow seed. It says that when she went up to the house of the Lord, Penina provoked her. Therefore, Hannah wept and did not eat. Hannah is so tormented that Hannah doesn't want to eat any food. Because what's not God's will for her life, she wants to fight it and make it happen. She don't want to be different. She don't want to be powerful. She don't want to be submissive to God's will. She wants to make something that is not what God built her for happen. And now this has become her driving force in life. Let me ask you a question. What happened to Hannah, serving and helping God, it has gone out the window. Now it's about her. What happened to Hannah fulfilling God's desire and 
obeying God's commandment and pursuing his instruction, it has gone out the window. See, when you live for yourself in this life, you become an ambassador of iniquity. You become an ambassador of an incorrect career. You become a philosopher of wrong education. The education is wrong. Wow. Now, look at this here. She's in the house of the Lord where the presence of God is. And the Bible says she's weeping. That means that she's sorrowful. But watch this. What is the root cause of this sorrow? The Bible says in uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow. So she's in the blessing, right? According to the lifestyle. But why is she sorrowful? Because she's cursed. Hear me prophetically. She's not cursed because somebody forced a spell on her. She's cursed because she's too lazy to cast down vain imaginations. She's not cursed because somebody is playing a vex on her mind and sending spells and curses to her household. She's cursed because she's inactive with the weapons of her warfare. She's not using none of them. She's lazy and sitting her behind up there doing nothing. There's no fight in her. There's no tenacity. There's no wisdom. There's no understanding. There's no desire to learn. There's no desire to pursue. There's no desire to be meek. There's no hunger for righteousness. There's no hunger for righteousness. Look at what the Bible says nextly. Men are cursed not because somebody spoke something over them. Men are cursed because they never learned what to speak over their self consistently men are not cursed because somebody is fighting them on the outside men are cursed because they're fighting God on the inside and the heart doesn't listen God say I don't want you to go over there and listen to that I want you to be right here and listen to that but in two days you over there listening to that God had already told you. So the person is cursed, not because somebody, oh, I'm cursed because my mama was like this. My dad was like this. No, no, no. You're cursed because you're fighting God on the inside because he done gave you grace to be new. You, 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 you won't listen, though. The person that believes that Jesus died and rose again is often cursed. The person that believes that there is a Holy Ghost is often cursed. The person that believes in prophecy is often cursed. The person that believes that the word of God is truth is often cursed. Because believing is not the highest level of purity. The Bible said demons believe and they tremble. But where is the end finality a finale of a demon, hell. Then the Bible said that hell was made for Satan and his angels. So where's the end finale of a demon, hell? So wait a minute, let's back it up. 
How could the word say that demons believe and they tremble, but then demons, their end result is hell. So that means that believers go to hell. Wow. That's why Apostle Paul was saying, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Why would you ask that, Apostle Paul, if they believe in, don't they got the Holy Ghost? Why would you ask that? I think that's Acts chapter 19, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Acts chapter 19? I got to find it. But in my mind, I'm, 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 I'm around there like Acts 19. But let's look. It says in Acts 19, yeah, Acts 19, verse 2. Look what it says. And it came to pass, Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard that there is any Holy Ghost. Way, 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 don't tell me this. No, nah, don't tell me this. No, nah, don't tell me that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, the Bible just said that they was disciples. The Bible just said that they was believers. The Bible just said that they believed. Wait, 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 wait. They said we ain't even here. We don't even know no Holy Ghost. Where's the Holy Ghost? What is that? Who is that? Where is that? Believers go to hell all the time. Hell is full of believers because they didn't change. You can't go to heaven if you don't change. You cannot go to heaven because you're trying to do what is right. Because there are people in heaven today that changed and did what was right. So what do you say to them? Oh, it was different for you because it was different in your time. No, no, no. They will look at you and say, baby, during our time, we didn't have the grace of God. During our time, we didn't have the teaching of grace, rather. We had the grace of God, but we didn't have the teaching of grace. We didn't have this dispensation of the blood of Jesus and the grace of the Lord and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We didn't have this type of level of knowledge that we could uh, release. A binding or a loosing. We could cast down vain and matter. We didn't have all this teaching and explanation. You got it. That's why the book of Revelation said, let him that is filthy be filthy still. Let him that is, uh, let him that is uh, holy be holy still. You know what that means? It means that when, when your life is over, you don't got time to change nothing. The state in which you die is the state in which you exist forever, either in hell or heaven. You know what's so uh, wild? You know, they, um, this is so weird, by the way. Like, people always want to talk about the universe, the universe. It's crazy. The universe is created not a creator. So when somebody say the universe did it, how could something created override the creator in sovereignty? Our generation. All right. I want to close out this. Lastly, let's go here. Look at what the Bible says. She didn't eat. So every, do you know like they, they all eating, they're feasting, and she won't eat. She losing weight. She don't got no booty. Behind just gone. 
Ain't nothing El Cana could slap, tap, trap, clap, nothing. Pap. <laughs> Road map, nothing. Her behind is, is not fine. Her chest don't went west. Her chest don't went west is less. Her chest don't went left is, is left is less. She don't got no behind and, and <laughs> she, she don't got no behind. She ain't got no chest. She look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in a skinny form. Arnold Schwarzenegger in a skinny form like this here. She walking around. She ain't do her makeup that day either. She ain't do her makeup. I promise you that she ain't do her makeup because she ain't eat nothing. She not looking pretty. Her lips ashy. You know when you don't eat too much, the corners get all white. It's a boosicles. Don't think about it. It's a boosicles. It's a boosicles. Don't think about it. <laughs> don't, don't think about it. All right. <laughs> so all this is happening. She done lost weight. She don't look sexy. She don't look nice. And look what the word of God say. She not eating nothing. She fasting. So she not even submitted to Elkanah no more. Elkanah is not the one, her master, telling her what to do. This is, no, I, I, I'm talking about Elkanah, but I'm showing you this is what happens with you and the Holy Ghost when you go pursue your own will. And, and what you see for yourself is what you run after. This is what happens. You stop eating from him. He is not the one feeding your mind. The world is feeding your mind. Rap music is feeding your mind. Hip hop, R&B is feeding your mind. People at your workplace is feeding your mind. Your neighbors are feeding your mind. The booty call is feeding your mind. The cigarette is feeding your mind. The weed, the weed is feeding your mind. The jealousy is feeding your mind. Look what this says lastly. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, see, her husband is bothered by this, her overseer. See, the Holy Spirit get bothered. When he can't feed you no more, you don't have any interest in his will, his instruction. He's bothered and he'll come to you and reach for you. Look at this. So Elkanah, her husband, her master, her teacher, her Holy Ghost came to her and says, Hannah. Why weepest thou? Imagine when the Holy Spirit is seeking clarity on your emotional state. Imagine when it is the Holy Spirit coming to Cain and saying, where's your brother? I need some clarity on your emotional state, your decision. Where is your brother at? Remember, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and asks him, Who made you a teacher and you don't know these things? You don't know these things? Imagine Jesus is asking him, Why are you teaching Without my anointing. I haven't been able to teach you. So what are you teaching to people? All right. Look at this here. Hannah, why weepest thou? Verse 8. And why don't you eat? And why is your heart grieved? See, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, 
Your heart inherits grief. Because the blood of Jesus gave the Holy Spirit authority over you. The Holy Spirit owns you. So when the Holy Spirit can't have his way. And the Holy Spirit is grieved. Your heart becomes grieved. Look at the state that Hannah is in. The Holy Ghost asks in her, why you not eating? But the truth of the matter is, the Holy Ghost is not eating around Hannah. Because none of the fruit of the Spirit is coming out of her. He can't eat her submission, her faith, her obedience, her determination, her persistency, her honor. He can't eat her joy. He can't eat her gladness. He can't eat her servanthood. He can't eat her helpfulness. He can't eat her virtue. He can't eat her wisdom, her understanding, her maturity, her agreement with his will. The Holy Spirit is hungry. When he gets around Hannah. Wow. Is the Holy Ghost fasting in your life? Man of God. Woman of God. Is the Holy Ghost hungry and thirsty around your decisions? Is the Holy Ghost in a famine right now? When he gets around you. Now, when he gets around somebody else, he might be feasting, enjoying himself, getting everything that he wants. But when he get around you, is the Holy Spirit hungry for attention, thirsty for worship? Is he starving for praise? Can he get a conversation to come out of you? All right. And he asks Hannah, am I not better to you than 10 sons? What what Elkanah is saying, I'm treating you better than 10 sons. Oh my goodness, wow. He's telling her, I treat you better than my own children. You, you, it, it, your life is so good. But watch this here. What has become the vampire of Hannah? Covetousness. Jealousy. Comparison, ungratefulness, unthankfulness, ingratitude, wrong attitude, wrong appetite. There's no room for her to celebrate all the good things that God has done for her because her heart is still wicked. She's still an evil woman, no matter what God has done for her. God's goodness doesn't lead her to repentance. It leads her into a mindset of saying, well, what don't I have? I don't got no children. Okay, so now I'm going I'm to I'm plant myself here, and I'm going to terrorize myself here, and I'm going to tell myself I'll be happier if I just have children. And I'm going to tell myself I'll be better if I just have children. I tell myself that I'll have joy if I just have children. This is why I feel drained I don't have children. This is why I feel like I'm losing my mind I don't have no children. If I just have a child. And people all the time say, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like this because I'm missing out on this. And really, you're feeling like that because you and God are at odds with each other. 
And Satan, who you have given credibility to, have told you why you feel the way you feel. Satan is an interpreter. Of why your heart is having trouble. Satan is an interpreter of why your emotions are downtrodden. Why your mind is in a world storm. Why your soul is in a, in a drought. Why your decisions are in a decline. Satan is an interpreter and a liar. And the conclusion you say, I, I, I'm sad because I don't got a vehicle. I'm sad because I'm in the homeless shelter. I'm sad because I'm sick and I want to feel better. And man had believed Satan from generation to generation and their diagnosis, your diagnostics rather, are wrong. Who diagnosed you? Because the Bible that you read, right, it says happy is the man that findeth wisdom in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 and on. So happiness is in finding wisdom. Not finding a child. Not finding a house. Not finding a car. Not finding a spouse. And what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what did it mean to fear the Lord? When you respect him, when you reverence him, when you pit him above your own desires, it says this is the beginning of wisdom. Your wisdom does not begin until you say me, as for me and my body. I'm going to pit the work in to learn how to be God's friend. I'm going to put the work in to learn how to avoid traps and trespassing against God and snares and things that so easily beset me. Hallelujah. 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 You know, one of the greatest things that you want to avoid, avoid is that you let Satan do a voice over on the Holy Ghost. One of the things you want to avoid in this life is that you let Satan do a voice over on the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, he, he said this, but now Satan is doing a voice over. And now the movie is bootlegged. See, the, the original person that acted in the movie in the original language has been overtaken by a voiceover. God already told you not to eat from the tree. Now the serpent is doing a voiceover, have God not said. Somebody else is acting as an original when they are counterfeit. Hannah can't serve God because she's now serving herself and to serve self is to serve Satan. Why is hell overpopulated? Because man didn't understand 
Me serving Satan is not me just saying, hey, Satan, here I am to worship you. Me serving Satan is when my emotions become more important to me. I prioritize how I feel over pursuing God for his will. That's all it is. That's all it is. Wow. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Yes, we bow down and worship Yahweh. Oh, yes, we bow down and worship Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we bow down and worship Yahweh. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. That was Michael W. Smith's song. Your grace, your grace shines on me, shines on me, shines on me, oh. Your grace, it shines on me, shines on me, shines on me. It's your grace, your grace. Now, let me say this here. I want to read this lastly. In verse 10, it says that Hannah was in bitterness of soul. So she's bitter. Everything that God has done for her has had no effect on her. In Hannah's mind, she's still saying, I need a child. I need a child. Until I have a child, I'm not happy. Wow. And this is one of the greatest seasons of Satan's life. When Satan could magnify a desire in you, that you say, if I don't get the desire, 
I'm not happy. If I don't get the desire, I'm not going to praise. If I don't get the desire, I'm not going to sow. If I don't get the desire, I'm not going to be joyous. I'm not going to be peaceable. I'm not going to be mature. If I don't get the desire, and that's the worst place one could be. Where you literally say, I'm not going to be a good experience for God if he don't give me what I wasn't created to have. If you don't bring my children back, I'm not going to serve you. If you don't fix my marriage, I'm not going to love you. If you don't give me sex, I'm not going to honor you. If you don't give me a child, I'm not going to submit to you. If you don't give me this car, I'm not going to praise you. If you don't give me this house, I'm not going to believe in you. And this is how Satan has won over man each and every time. Because Satan will blind you from all God's works in your life and have you zoom into one thing that Satan said you must have this or else. The woman in the Garden of Eden had everything, animals, everything in subjection to her, silver and gold, money, everything, her villa, everything. But the serpent was able to convince her, you don't have this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, do you? You don't have it, do you? This the one thing you don't have. But saints, let me say something powerful to you. This, 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 this is so amazing. It's always the one thing that you don't have that is carrying a strong wave of fear and respect towards God. Because the minute you don't have it and the minute that you look and see that you don't have it with the right heart, you'll recognize, wow, I get to give God something that respects him because he didn't want my life like this. So now I get to show him I respect that. They said that if you're a man, you're supposed to have a son. But if I don't have a son, I respect that. They said if you're a woman, you're supposed to have children because you got a tun tun and you got eggs. But I respect that. They said that if you have children, you must raise them. But God called me away from my children. I respect that. They said that is impossible for you to have a relationship with the Lord if you don't go to a building on Sunday. But the Lord told me don't go to no building. I respect that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is that one thing that Satan the serpent will magnify and say, you don't got that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, do you? And you get to say, well, this is where I respect God because he don't want me to have this tree. 